anything. Do you have that video ready? Are you, you got it ready to go? I wanted you to do something. Everybody stand up a moment, amen. Just go ahead and stand up and just watch this video. It's only two minutes. Just watch it. Cut the light off. Hallelujah. Somebody say, have faith in God. Say, I have faith in God. Say, no fear here. Look at somebody tell them, no fear here. Look at somebody else say, no fear allowed here. Amen. You can have a seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, last week we talked about slam the door on fear. Amen. Hallelujah. When fear comes knocking, tell them, hey, I'm not opening the door. The person you're looking for don't live here. The one that's looking for fear, go somewhere else. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, because of the conference we're going to have, uh, the Lord just t- took me back to bring some messages about fear, not having fear, because... Uh, it was about in, in the year 2008, about the same time, a lot of fear was in the world, amen. And, of course, in uh, 2001, after the 9-11 uh, uh, terrorist attack. And so there's big fear in the world a lot of times, amen. And now there's this uh, fear that's rising up about financial crisis hitting again and, and uh, about foreign situations going everywhere. In fact, we know what's going on in the Middle East. We've seen, if you watch the news, you see all the refugees by the millions are going out of Syria and out of those areas trying to get away from, listen, from what? From terror that people want to kill. Amen. Christians are being persecuted. We don't worry. I, I mean, I don't understand it because I don't understand persecution. Amen. But they're being persecuted. And they're having to run for their lives, amen, for their faith. Amen. And uh, so there's great troubles in the world. Amen. This morning, I... Uh, I came into my office, and uh, the Lord had changed the message some, and I told Tony, man, just, Lord, i got to get this thing. He changed the message again on me, amen. I had it all set out, man. And I said, so anyway, I was listening to some music. I said, let me check the news. I hadn't checked the news this morning because I've been with the things with the Lord this morning. So let me check the news. So I go on and check the news, and I get the front page of the news, and guess what I find? Fear is growing. U.S. warns against more aid to Assad regime. It warns Russia, amen. Fear is growing. I said, huh, amen. I'll check the news, and what did it say? It confirms fear is growing. Where? 
in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Fear is growing everywhere. Amen? So I want to talk to you again this morning about fear not. And I want to talk to you about trouble. You know, the Bible is clear. Jesus said in this world, you will. It's not you might. It said you will have trouble. We also looked last week, amen, at some of our declarations out of Isaiah that says what? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Notice what it says. It says no weapon will prosper. It doesn't say there wouldn't be weapons. There are weapons all the time. The point is, it says, listen, if you'll trust God and believe God, they will not have their final intended purpose and outcome. Amen. See, the purpose of trouble, the purpose of crisis, the purpose of, the purpose of everything you see going on, is, is there's one purpose, is to take you out of faith and to get you into fear. Amen. Take you out of trusting God and take you into fear. And the only answer for trouble and crisis is trusting God and faith. Amen. But see, it comes, it's like a double down. If you, if, I don't know if you see it, but I'm surprised how many people don't know what's really going on in the world. Christians, you should know what's going on in the world. Because you say you're a prayer warrior. <laughs> you need to know what to pray about. When you got through praying for your church and leaders and so and so and this person's illness and that, what are you going to pray about? You should know what's going on in the world. If not, you won't know how to pray for the millions of refugees that are fleeing terror. Amen. How could you know to pray for that if you don't know what's going on in the world? How could, how could you pray for America if you don't know what's happening just this past week in America? I wonder how many know what happened just this past week in America. Amen. Well, you know I'm going to tell you, right? If you don't know, amen. But let me start off with this. I say faith. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot separate what you believe from what you do. You cannot separate what you believe from what you do because if you think you can, that means you really don't believe. Listen to me. Because we think we can carpentalize our life, and it's not. Listen to me. By the way, that, that brother you saw up there, Pastor Scott, who was in the, in the video, you saw him, amen? He's running for, uh, I think, Hillsborough County Commission, amen? I think I can tell you, he's a good man to, anyway, he's a good man, amen? <laughs> amen. So now you know, amen. But you can't really do this. I can't say one thing in public and say that my life of faith in God is private. That's a lie. It's a lie. Because you can't, because that means you don't really believe. If you really believe in the Lord, if you really believe in God, then it's going to affect you in everything you do. So when you hear a politician say, well, you know, it's a private thing, you go, he's telling you the truth. It is a private thing to him. It's not something he really lives. Come on now. Because if you live it, if you believe it, you live it. I don't care if, you, what, if you're dog catcher or, or whatever position you got. If you believe it, you will live it. Amen. And if you don't live it, it's because you really don't believe it. There's no compromise, no question about that. Come on. Hallelujah. But you know, America reflects the church. The church has been in total compromise for years. The body of Christ has been in total compromise for years. All they want to hear is that nice message, amen, that you don't have to obey nothing no more because God loves you so much. Lie. God still calls us to obey. Amen? Come on. How many say, oh, well, he did away with the law. Yeah, he did away with the law, man, but he never did away with his law. Amen? Come on. You think God, who, who issued the Ten Commandments? Moses? No, God did. So what did God do? Say, well, I'll strike those out now. You don't worry about these anymore, boys. No, they still apply. And whoever tells you they don't, they miss something. They, listen, they don't understand. Because God still says you need to obey. You need to obey. Amen. Oh, well, I thought everything's fulfilled and love God and love your neighbor. Absolutely. But so many people don't understand what that means, so you've got to have ten to tell you what it means. Amen. But see, people, they, they want to do away with that. Well, see, if you're a Christian, you believe it needs to be done away with, then get your chisel, get your hammer, and join the unbelievers and go to the Supreme Court and start chiseling away the Ten Commandments that are on the walls of the Supreme Court. The church is responsible. 
The church is responsible. See, we can believe in the love of God. We can flow in the grace and the love of God. But we have responsibilities, amen? We have responsibilities to walk in the righteousness that God said is ours. Come on. Ooh, some of us. Without mentioning names, I was reading in the, the news that this pastor had been uh, dismissed from his church and his credentials taken from him because of two continual incidents of sin. And then a couple of weeks after that, he winds up at a big church. The big church hired him, they said, because, you know, he knows how to organize. And he's written six books. Is that the qualification to be a shepherd in the kingdom of God? Because you know how to organize and you wrote six books? Is it even being able to preach well? Is it even able to be able to speak well? No. It's able to live your life well and to live the life of God. Come on. Amen. And when I, when I read that, I said, my God, that's what's wrong in America. The church. Amen. How many know, listen, when I was a, when I was a banker, they didn't hire me for my strict, for my great morality. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They didn't care what I did as long as I brought in the dough. Amen. The business. Amen. They didn't care. Just, just keep it discreet now. See? But that's the world. The church ain't supposed to live like that. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just want to share this with you because uh, it's, uh, it's really what's happening, folks. Listen. And, and I'm going to say some things here, amen, you need to listen to, and you may not like it, but so be it. I don't know. But you got if you're a real believer, you'll understand this. You can't separate what you believe from what you do. Because if you do something that you say that you're not, in other words, if I say I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, but yet I do everything else publicly that's not, that means that's not true. This is what I really believe. This is what I really believe. It's what I do. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not what I say. It's what I do. It's what I really believe. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, this past week, if you read the news, amen, or watch it in, or whatever, you all heard about, uh, how many heard about that, that uh, county clerk in Kentucky that got put in jail? Amen. Okay. Irregardless of who she is, amen, we're not talking about her, but what happened, if you well know, amen, that uh, uh, homosexual people that came over to get marriage licenses, and she refused. See, the state of Kentucky had a law, or has a law, that says that uh, they only recognize marriage between a man and a woman. That's the law, amen. But how many know the Supreme Court came and they gave a ruling that they had no right given? Listen to me closely. In the Constitution of the United States, it doesn't talk anything about marriage. And it doesn't. In fact, the Constitution says every, listen, all powers not specifically granted to the federal government are reversed or they're left to the state. There's nowhere you're going to find a law, federal law, that says anything about marriage and constitutional marriage. And you're not going to find it. So what the Supreme Court did, they didn't rule on a law. They made a law. Amen. Now, I want you to see what's happening in America. This lady refused. Amen. She couldn't be fired. She has to be either impeached by their legislature. Amen. So what he did, she, the federal judge called her in and told her she had to uh, do what he had told her to do. You have to issue them lies. She said, no, it's a matter of my faith. I won't do it. He said, I'm putting you in jail. And he put her in jail with no bail for the duration of whatever to, until she will submit to either quit, resign, or Submit, amen, to put her name on a homosexual marriage license. That's what's happening in America. You better wake up. You might think, oh, well, that, you know what? It's coming, the folks. Listen, even what I'm speaking here today, there's going to be a day coming, amen. If they, we don't have a great awakening, great change, they're going to come get me. But, you know, by the time in my age and my life, I said, come get me, amen. You know, no problem with me, amen. You can put that over the web, the internet, amen. Amen. And, they, and listen, and they won't get, do you know they'll give an illegal alien that comes here, they'll let them out with no bail. They'll let people that, that, that shot somebody, they'll let them out and give them bail. This woman, they won't even give her bail. Figure that out. Think about it. 
What crime did she commit? I refuse. I stand on my conscience of what I believe. And so what they do, they put her in jail to, you're going to submit. Sound like, uh, sound like, who sound like Daniel and all that? Amen. Sound like the three Hebrew boys, too. Everybody said, well, we're supposed to submit. Well, why don't you go tell the three Hebrew boys, amen, when the king threw them in the fiery furnace because they wouldn't submit. Amen. Come on, think about it. Amen. I just, I just blew me away. No bail. I mean, that's reserved. Listen, even, even murderers get $5 million bail. There was just a murderer the other day, the one that, I forget which one it was, they gave him a bail of $5 million, which he knew he couldn't do. But they even give him, but this lady, she wouldn't even get $5 million bail. Why? They're going to teach us a lesson. They're going to teach her a lesson. And they're going to teach every Christian a lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. And I'm here to tell you, man, you can look up law with everyone. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, the federal government had no authority to meddle in, in local affairs of marriages. Amen. Because in nowhere is that a federal law. Amen. Look it up. Amen. That's what's happened in America. Amen. And the church needs to wake up. And the church has been a part of this, amen, by turning our head and winking the eye at sin and everything that goes on in the church, amen. But I'm not even talking about the people in the church. I'm talking about the leaderships in the church, amen. That's the problem. The people that come to church aren't the problem. They come to church because they got problems and they want to get rid of it. How many know that's why I came, amen? And so it, it wasn't that, look at Hank Fur. He came to church. He had drugs in his pocket. That's how he used to come to church. I wasn't the problem. It would be leadership if one following the Lord would be the problem. Amen? Do you hear me? That's the problem in the church. It's not the people because people are always going to be coming with trouble. Come on. People are always going to be coming struggling with sin or something. Amen? And they're welcome in the kingdom of God because God's, and that's what this is all about. But the problem is leadership. Amen? It's the way the church goes, the way the country goes. Take a look at it. My God. Compromise everything, amen, and, and Christians will not stand on what they believe. Hallelujah. Guess what? There's no deliverance through a politician. Our only appeal is to heaven. You, you listen, don't, don't even worry about appealing to a politician, amen, because uh, they, they do what they believe. You know what they believe? Anything that will get them elected, anything that will get them uh, rich, enriched, amen, 99.9% .9 of them. So our only appeal, listen, is to the Lord, is to heaven. Amen. So this morning, go with me to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. You know, we have a, uh, a right and we really have an obligation to stand up to unrighteousness and to stand up to the promotion of sin. I remember when I first got born again, uh, my pastor, I remember I was watching TV one day and I saw them putting him handcuffs on him and putting him in a bus, taking him to jail. Pastor Louie. Amen. Pastor Louie, he had handcuffs, they put him in a bus loaded with people, taking him to jail. Those that were marching against abortion. And they put him in jail. I don't know if they, I guess he, he got out, but, uh, you know, but the point is, uh, you've got to listen. You're going to have to get, you're going to have to get strong in what you believe, amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have to get strong, amen. Because this is not about a rights, this is not about people's rights. It's about an agenda driven to change you, to change America, and listen, and to get rid of Christianity. No, Christianity, real believers are a threat to the world system. You. If you're a real believer, you're a threat to the devil. You're a threat to his system, amen. And he's going to do everything he can through his system. The people's in power that are a part of his system, he's going to do everything he can, listen, to trap you, listen, to get you so, put you in a, in a fear of bondage so that you get, you lose hope, you, you want to quit, you want to cave in. He said there's no use. See, that's the purpose of all these troubles, amen. It's to cause you and me to, to get lose hope. Cause you and me not to live and by faith and to trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 46. 
this is actually a song that they used to sing, amen? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Oh, but there is a river. The streams wherever shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathen rage. Hey, the heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in fire. But still, be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Just like that psalm said, God, and the psalms we were saying, God, listen, he will fight for us, but we need to have the faith to stand in that fight. Amen? Hallelujah. See, you can't go bury your head, close the door and stay at home, have a prayer meeting, and not know what's happening all around you. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. Go to Psalm, uh, oh, I changed it, excuse me. Go to Psalm 112. I guess I need to leave these alone. Amen. Go to Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Put my mic on there. I don't have to read it. Amen. Hey, that's a good thing. I hear some other things on phones sometimes. <laughs> that's a good thing. You ought to put earphones on and all day long as you work where you're at. Get that word in you. See, that's the only thing that's going to be our salvation. That's the only thing that's going to cause us to be able to stand. That's the only thing that's going to cause things to change. Amen. See, I believe in a great awakening coming. But before there's an awakening, there's a big sleep. <laughs> there's a big sleep right now. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, it's so deep, you don't even hear any snoring. Amen. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth or reverence God, the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. One that reverences God and delights in the commandments of the Lord, His Word. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. These are good things. Look, we like this stuff. Listen. Wealth and riches shall be in His house, and His righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. Are you upright this morning? Amen. Well, He says, unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Now, all those things is there, you know, things we like, talk about wealth and riches and, and favor and everything else. Then look at what it says. Surely he shall not be moved. His heart is fixed doing what? What's his heart fixed on? Are you reading the Bible? What's his heart fixed on? Trusting in the Lord. So here's a good man. He says, wealth and riches are in his house and generations forever on his seed. Blessed, amen. And we, that's, we, oh man, that's good stuff and it's true. But then it says, this good man is also what? Amen. He will not be moved. 
See, if you're just after God for the good things and not to be, not really to be all the way with Him, then you're going to be moved. Amen. But it says, "Surely He shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance." He, who, who's He? Who is He? You. Are you a good man or woman? Amen. Are you righteous? Favor of God on you. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches in your house. Your righteousness endureth forever. That's you, right? It says, that person, put your name in it, shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is what? On what? His heart is what? Fixed in what? His heart is fixed in trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endured forever. His horns shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth, the wicked will, and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. If we, as true believers, are willing to stand and put our trust in God, have our, listen, have our mind made up and our heart fixed, amen, that we're with the Lord all the way, it says, amen, right here, listen, I believe it, that the desire of the wicked, we're going to see it eventually perish. Amen. Hallelujah doesn't mean that wickedness will perish from the earth. That won't happen until Jesus comes. But their desire that's overtaking everything, we're going to see it perish. We're going to see it perish. I believe it. I believe it. You know, when Apostle Lee brings us messages this, this coming weekend, you know, like I've told you already, these messages, amen, they're, to, they're for a warning, but it's not for fear. Amen? You know what? I don't, it don't bother me. They can tell me that uh, uh, everything's going to go down on September 30th. It I, I don't bother me. I don't believe in dates and times anyway. Amen? But, they, you know, they look at seasons and say this might be happening. It could happen here. But, you know, I look at it this way. I believe what the Word. The Word says that nobody knows. Amen? Now, it might not necessarily be the end of time. So there could be financial crisis and wars and things of that nature, but it doesn't necessarily mean the end. So you don't know. So, but the point is you just got to trust God and say, thank you, give me the information, let me see what it is, and let me put my trust in God, and let me now know how I should really be praying and really be doing things. Amen. You know, if you, if you really get concerned that, wow, this could be the end, then what should you be doing, Christian? Doing what? Doing what? Yep, okay, but what we need to be doing with the rejoicing, though? You're right, but what we need to do? What? Yeah. But if we're really believers and we believe this is, the, this is going to be it, what should we be doing? We should be evangelizing everywhere we can, telling people about Jesus, amen, seeing the people get saved and come to the Lord, amen? Come on, that's the truth. If you th if the, Listen, that should be the response. Wow, this could be it. Then we need to get even more serious about our evangelism and what we're doing. Amen. Because if we're really concerned about our, oh, how about our family? Woo, come on. If family not saved, amen, then you should say, oh, I got to really press in somehow or other to get my family on board. Amen. Because troubles come, I know I'm trusting God, but they're not. My friends, my co-workers, they're not trusting God. I need to, they need to get with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Neville was sharing with me. She went to go through this, what, conference uh, a couple of days. And it was uh, pretty eye-opening. And it's really everything we've been really talking about. Amen. It's definitely another gender. Amen. About things that they want. They just wanna, you're going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Clyde? They try to. This is not. This is not. This is not uh, civil rights. They try to put all. This, this is sin rights. There's a difference. 
okay? When, the, when there were civil rights, that was real, you know, and, and, the, and the church, the majority of the church stood up for it. But this is not about civil rights. This is about sin rights. I want my right to sin. And, but you already had the right to sin. But the problem is now, you don't just want your right to sin. You want everybody to agree with it. And if they don't agree with it, then put them in jail. Because you think, because of your right to sin, that I got my right to sin, if anybody would oppose you or have another opinion, then you feel condemned. Well, you ought to be. Why do you think this is an uproar? If I could get, see, if, I, if I'm a dastardly sinner and I'm in this, and if I get everybody to, to kind of agree with it, maybe it'll make me feel better about myself. Because I guarantee you, come on now, people in this deep sins, all kind, amen, they really don't feel that good about themselves. But if everybody get on board and even the government say, you got to do this, hey, man, I, see? But they're really going to shoot themselves anyway. Suicide is great in some of these sins. I mean, I'm telling you. Like I said, you might like it, you might not like it, but that doesn't matter. I've got, as a pastor, I have to tell you the truth. Amen. No matter where it falls, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. When I was a bank, in the banking business, <laughs> I was on the board at the university. And we're having a big dinner at a board meeting. We're having a board meeting at the university, and we're sitting around having dinner and having this board meeting. And one of the board members of the university was, most of you don't remember, I know John will, was uh, Tom Vance. You know, who remembers Tom Vance from the city council? One, two, three, four, amen. Just a couple of those, amen, the old timers, amen. No, the, the people have been, they were raised up here in Florida, right, in Tampa. They <laughs> well, I remember we're sitting there in the, uh, Tom was city council, and we're having dinner, and uh, and uh, he was presenting some kind of uh, some kind of uh, get a city ordinance passed against some of these porn shops and these dance clubs and all that kind of stuff, huh? Now I'm not born again, remember? I'm and I'm sitting there eating, and uh, I'm drinking, having my scotch, you know, and all that. And Tom, he don't drink nothing, you know. So I look at him, and, you know, so you know we had things like. Man, I won't trust anybody I don't smoke or drink. That's the world thinking. They have world philosophies, right? That's true. In fact, do you know what president said that? Theodore Roosevelt. I don't know if anybody a history buff in here, amen. But anyway, so we're sitting there, and so I open up my mouth. I've always been one open my mouth. Even for, you know, I open it good for good today, but I open it for bad then. And I told her, I said, I don't know, so we got into some of this. I looked at Tom and said, Tom, why don't you keep your own beliefs and your moralities to yourself? They don't belong in, in the public arena. What was I speaking? I'm speaking just like the heathen speaking today. Why? I didn't like it, what he was doing. And, what, because, and why? Because it was making, it was making me uncomfortable because he was speaking, he was going to want to get an order just passed about everything that I liked to do back then. See? <laughs> Nothing changes, amen. That's the truth. I mean, I went total. I'm like, I'm like this. <laughs> you, see what, you see what I'm talking about here now? Because it uh, made me feel uncomfortable. And then I think I also told you at the Bucks games back when I used to go to pastor the University Church of God, he'd open up the, the games and at the 50 yard line every time with a prayer. You know, and I'd be still, I had, you know, I always went to the, I had season tickets all the time. Amen. And then when I, then when I went, didn't have my ticket, I went in the sky box at the bank. Amen. I love football. I still do, but not like I used to. But he come out there and open with prayer. Everybody bow their heads, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd voice myself. I'd say, man, why they, what's that got to do with football? Get this out of here. I mean, why? Because it brought conviction to me about, see, that made me feel uncomfortable. And that's what's going on today. And today, they think if we pass a law, that'll be better because then you've got to shut up and I'll feel comfortable. But the truth is you'll never feel comfortable in the sin because it's going to eat up at you, eat at you, and eat at you anyway personally. It'll get you, amen. But we think if we got a law, we'll be fine, amen. 
Hallelujah. They don't, by the way, they don't pray before the games anymore now, do they? Amen. Why? We're more enlightened now. We've moved into the modern era. Amen. Where there are no Ten Commandments either. Amen. Oh, Shama, let me keep going. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I, going, there's going to be part two to this already, see. Amen. Because I ain't even moved yet. Go to First John. Actually, this is part two. Yeah, there will be a, I'll definitely see a part three, four, and five. Amen. Hallelujah. First John, chapter five. See, sometimes we, we sit here, and you might even be hearing me, listening to me, and see things on the news, amen, that's going on, and, but you really don't think it can happen to you. You really don't believe it could happen right here. You really don't. I have to admit, sometimes I, I think it can't happen. That can't really happen. Come on. How can it be that one day, Vernon, that somebody will come and tell me, we, we watched you over here, and that what you were preaching, we're going to call you in and ask you about the, the hate you're preaching, they'll call it hate. That's one thing to do. They call it hate. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. See, it's hard for me to believe that would happen. But I believe it's it's happening. It's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all remember the, uh, some of you remember, some of you don't, I'm sure. What happened in Houston, Texas, not too long ago, a couple of months ago. Amen. The, uh, the mayor of, of Houston, Texas is a lesbian. And she wanted to have bathrooms for, I think, what was it, just transgenders, male and female, everybody just mix it up together. <laughs> Go figure that, you know. Huh? There's a petition to get that done in schools in this state, too, for, for bathrooms for men, for boys and girls. They all just, they ain't no, they ain't no gender no more. Everybody just a Z. <laughs> That's another thing, isn't it? No he, she, but a Z. I don't know if I've seen that. There's a university, amen, that they won't allow you to, to call anybody a she or he anymore. Now it's a Z. Everybody's a Z. Do you see insanity anywhere? Do you see why we really got to stand on the scripture that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love and a sound mind? Because the world ain't got no sound mind. Well, whoo, Z. It, the world's never really had a sound mind. The problem is, amen, that uh, people in authority, the unsound minds have taken over, amen, <laughs> all over the world, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, where was I? First John. First John chapter 5. Here is, the whole word's the answer, but here's an answer for us right here. For fear. To cast out that fear, here's the answer. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, Whoever whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. For this we know, that we love the children of God when we love God. And keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Let me stop. Don't kill. Is that grievous? Don't steal. Is that grievous? Keep holy the Lord's day. That might be grievous for us, amen. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Is that it might be grievous for some of us. Don't 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 covet people's stuff. Oh, that might be grievous. So you see what it's the commandments of God are not grievous. My God, they're for one. How many know they're for a reason? The reason is what? To keep you in perfect peace. If I don't do none of them things and I just love God and love my neighbor, and I, listen, I'm going to be at peace. When you start messing with all that stuff, guess what happens? No peace. I know because I used to break a, several of those ten. Amen? Quite a few of them. Never killed anybody that I know of. Amen. Probably done all the others, I think. Amen. Yeah, I'm sure. Amen. Taking the name of the Lord in vain. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's, 
Ma c'è un film, eh? Whosoever, verse 4, is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. What overcomes the world? How we overcome the world? Our what? Faith. Our trusting God. Believing in God. Relying on God. Acting on what God said. That is how we overcome. Not by caving in. Not by compromise. Not by being wishy-washy about what we believe. Amen. That's how you overcome. Who is it that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is, Jesus is the Son of God. Look at somebody and say, we overcome. Why are you an overcomer? Because you believe. You have faith. What is it that overcomes the world? Faith. What? Trusting God. Believing God. Relying on God. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. My Lord, my God. Go to Matthew chapter 13. A lot of things happening in the world and, and everything else, troubles, crisis, amen. And like I said, it's for the purpose, listen, of taking you out of faith, to taking you out of what you believe. But a lot of times, even things happening in the church are for, and it's not like, well, if we're going to pay and get the people out of faith. No, it's not like that. But a lot of things that happen in the church really squash through faith, amen, with a lot of compromise, amen. I'm not going to say that I don't believe that. There could be. You know, there's no church boards or pastors that get together. All right, this Sunday, we're going to minister and get the people out of faith, get them into fear, amen. Hallelujah. Get them to not trust God. Get them to believe that it's okay how they live because God loves you and it doesn't matter. I don't believe anybody plans that like that. I believe deception come into us. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. For the sake of time, Matthew chapter 13 talks about the parable of the sower. Amen? What's, what do we see in the parable of the sower? There's always things coming to what? Steal away the word of God that's been what? Sown into your mind, into your hearts. Amen. See, this fear thing, one of the way it works is it works on your mind. You can be st steadfast in your heart. But it begin, you allow it to begin to work on your mind. When you hear something about fear, it creates an image an image. You start seeing a picture or your own video of something happening. Amen? Now when Apostle Louis comes and he ministers about it, he starts saying about this EMP and how it could uh, uh, take away all the uh, what uh, power grid and all that, you know. What do you see in your mind? I see in my mind, whoop, there go the lights. Lights out. Cars don't move. Amen? That's an image. But the image against that is no matter what comes, I trust God. No matter what comes, God will make a way. I'm an overcomer because I have faith in God. I may not have electricity, but guess what? I still got faith in God. Amen. I may not be able to drive my car, but guess what? I still have faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I've been suffering this. I spent a whole week with no air conditioning. I have faith in God. The afflictions of the right. I look at the air conditioning, persecuted the rising for the word's sake. No. That's, what, that's what a church in America is considered 
persecution. Amen. Hallelujah. Or somebody don't like you or say something bad to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, look here what it says. Uh, jump to verse 12. Uh, it says the word is, well, uh, you receive the seed, it goes to stony ground, etc., and you get it with joy, you receive it. Yet, it says, verse 21, yet you have no root in yourself, uh, but endureth, amen, for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, you're offended. That means you get mad, you give up. See, what it says there, persecution, trouble comes what? Because of the word, amen. See, if you don't have no word of God in you, listen, then everything that's happening don't matter because you're part of it. Even though you might say something else, you're in, listen. But see, everything that's happening in the world that's against what God wants and against his word, then it has an effect on me for the standpoint, the standpoint that I'm even going to preach about it. And you're going to listen, you're going to go tell somebody else, listen. It's time for us as believers to take a stand. Amen. Take a stand. We're not called to bury our heads in the sand. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we call, listen, to take a stand. Amen. Take a stand of faith. Amen. Go and start really evangelizing people and tell them about Jesus. Amen. Because if we really believe this, that's what we're going to do. Look what it says on verse 22. And there's he that receives it, the seed, that's the word, among the thorns, is he that heareth the word. But what happens? The care of the world and the deceitful and riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. I'm telling you right now, the purpose of troubles and fears that we see today is for the purpose of choking you. It's a purpose to choke you, to choke the word of God out of your life. I mean, choke you to the point where you'll say, I give up. That's what they're trying to do that lady. Like I said, I don't know anything about her personal life. That doesn't matter. Amen. But people are trying to dig in her personal life. Oh, I think she was divorced before. Oh, well, you know, hallelujah. Amen. Can you be divorced and been a believer? I mean, I was, uh, I, don't know, I ain't going to go there, man. Before I knew God. See, if they could come and see me. Who are you to say anything? You've been divorced twice. I say, yeah, you're right. You want to know what else I've done? <laughs> it's even worse than that. Come on. You know. But, you know, that's what they start doing. Once you take a stand for righteousness, they want to dig you up and find out. Dig up the buried one. See, I'm born again. Uh, the, the old Hank's buried. So when now you start standing for righteousness, they say, let's go find that grave. Dig him up. Look at him. That's who he really is. You know, that's what they do in the, in the world, right? Amen. So the purpose of troubles and crisis is to what? To choke you. Listen, to get you to say, I give up to get you to compromise, to get you to say no more. Or like that, remember that famous boxer, no mas, no mas. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He gave up. I can't take anymore. Amen. I'm, I'm being straight with you. I, it's, I'm speaking these things and it's hard to see it happening. Isn't it? It would be hard to see it happening to say that, all right, Pastor Fur, we're calling you in before a committee or council. We want to talk to you about what you're saying. Amen. Oh, by the way, that I didn't finish that Houston mayor. She heard the pastors were speaking out against her, so she issued an order from the mayor's office. She wanted all these pastors, she wanted their sermon notes for the last year to see if they've been preaching against the homosexual agenda. This is true. Anybody remember reading that? Anybody? Yeah. Can you believe this? Do you see what's happening? Now, she didn't get away with it in the end. But they listen, it's being pushed, and it's going to happen now. Anyway, they wanted the sermon notes of each pastor to see if you've spoken against homosexuals. What's the deal? Do you want to see if you spoke against people smoking crack? No. Do they want to see if you spoke against people committing adultery? No. Why? They're all sin. Uh, I want to see your notes if you ever spoke against People killing somebody. You know, stuff, come on. You got to see what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. It's really not even all about that. It's really all about the spirit 
of Antichrist. Amen. That's what it's really about. By the way, it, it would just be cute. Listen to what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Not cute, but listen. They got rid of all the Christians in America. They silenced us to the point where we, 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 we can't do nothing. But now Islam takes over in America. What's going to happen to you if you're a sinner then? Come on now. Let's have some Sharia law. My God. Not only cut your head off if you push you off the top of a building. If you're homosexual, listen, they push you off, kill you. See, they don't realize Christians, we really do have the love of God because we left, we would leave them all alone. We'd witness to them by Jesus, but we weren't against nobody. And what happens when they come against us now, it's time to take a stand. See, but, but if you get the Islamic religion, come on, dude. They're going to wish, if that should ever happen, they're going to say, where are the Christians now? <laughs> because we weren't killing nobody. We weren't cutting nobody's hands off. We were telling about the love of God, the grace of God, and how God could change their lives. Amen. But now they get offended if you tell them God can change your life. Oh, you, 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 you can't say that to people. Okay. Just take your head off now. Do you see the insanity? Why isn't anybody rising up against stuff like that? Why isn't the women's movement rising up against all anything growing with Islam? Because you know what? The, hey, imagine yourself, ladies. And all we can see is just your eyes. Cheryl, how would you look when I'm out there? You couldn't have hair like you want. Ooh. You, couldn't, you can't wear your hair in a bun like that. we got to cover you up. Amen. Think about it. Why isn't everybody rising up against that? Because everybody's functioning. Those are functioning the spirit of Antichrist. And even people that oppose each other are together because of that spirit of Antichrist. Enemies working together and don't even know it. It's because they're controlled by the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, i got to stop. I didn't even get one eighth of the way through. That's all right. We'll come back. Amen. <laughs> That's the alphabet. I'm going to quit. I could keep on going, but I'm going to quit. I'm telling you, not even a fourth. Christians, trust God, get into the Word of God, deep into the Word of God, don't just be a Sunday believer, be an everyday believer, amen, listen, you've got to become everyday believers, not just Sunday believers, and I'm just talking about going to church, amen, because you can go to church Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and still not be a deep believer. I'm talking about let's get, let's go beyond just church. Let's get to become deep believers. Then if we do, guess what? Then church will be even more powerful. And listen, and everybody you see, tell them about it. Tell them Jesus loves you, and God's got a plan for your life. Jesus loves you, and God's got a plan for your life. Jesus loves you, and God's got a plan for your life. Amen. Stand strong, amen. Hallelujah. Ushers, take your place. Amen. And if uh, you need an envelope to sow your seed this morning, you don't have one yet, raise your hand to bring it and put it in your hand. Amen. Pastor Tony and Jeanette, amen. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to partake of the Lord's table. You know, there's power in the Lord's table. It's a, the, Lord, the table of commitment, the table of uh, God's uh, saying, remember what I've done. Remember. You know, that table is telling me, remember, Hank, have faith in God. No matter what comes, no matter what happens, have faith in God. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is, listen, he's not only our, our fortress, he's our defense. Amen.
He's everything to us. Amen? Hallelujah. And I know some of you really can't comprehend, don't want to comprehend it because it's difficult to believe, to think that one day we couldn't even be here and speak like we're speaking to you right now. But it's coming. If we, things don't change, it's coming. I know some of this. Uh, well, who had ever thought we would be in the place we're at today? And I believe this. I believe that we as the church, listen, we as the church need to stand up and strengthen and in faith, amen, and love, amen, because that's what we're going to be known by, by our faith and love, amen, trusting God and loving, amen, hallelujah. And that'll make, I believe that'll make the difference, amen. matter what comes, you know, I can still live happy. Everybody like the happy message, right? It don't change nothing. I can still have a happy faith. Every day can still be Friday. Amen? No matter what's going on, because why? And to me, every day can be Friday. Every day can be what a joy. Every day can be a place where I'm looking that I'm going to be happy. Why? Because I trust in and believe in God. And come what may, I'm still going to trust and believe in God. Amen? And God's going to see us through every single storm. Amen. Anybody been seen through some storms already? Come on. Well, if there have been some storms and, you've, and he's brought you through, I believe he's going to keep continue to bring us through. Amen. For those that will stand and say, I believe. Amen. Stand to your feet.